It doesn't matter if you're a kid or an adult. Nothing puts a spring in your step like a new pair of shoes. I want to put on my, 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 my boogie shoes. On this day, hundreds of students fill the cafeteria at Walter G. Byer School, anxiously waiting to hear their name. 17, Mary. No, it's not Christmas. But gosh, it sure looks like it. Shoe boxes line the tables, but where do they come from? Well, this story actually starts here, Discovery Place Kids in Huntersville. Heather Edmonds was on a field trip with her son when she noticed another school group and two boys with untied shoelaces. And when I went to tie their shoes, I noticed that the shoestrings were frayed and the soles on their shoes were separated and it looked like they had been kind of duct taped together. She couldn't get the kids out of her mind, so she called the school's volunteer coordinator Annie Alexander. A lot of times I've had students to come in with shoes that are too small or shoes that are too large. So when she says shoes, it's like, yes! And the more they talked, Heather realized there was a far greater need at the school. It wasn't just a two-kid thing, it was an entire school thing. She posted a message on Facebook. I said I had intentions of buying two pairs of shoes, and I've come to find out that there's about 350 students that are in desperate need, and I somehow want to make it possible to buy all of them new shoes. In four hours, friends shared Heather's post more than 100 times. Strangers started private messaging her, some offering to buy multiple pairs of shoes and socks. She kept a detailed list, tracking every child's shoe size. Heather says she wanted to give the kids something more than a brand new pair of shoes. The shoes are obviously a necessity, but the bigger picture is I I just want to give them hope. I want to make sure that these kids know that they're loved and that their circumstances right now don't define how the rest of their life has to go. From polka dots to stripes, hundreds of shoe boxes arrived, many with handwritten messages. Hi, Kara. I hope you like these shoes and they make you feel happy when you wear them. So these are all the ones that are wrapped. Heather got her neighbors to stack, <laughs> wrap. All right, let's wrap another pair. What paper do you want to use? And pack all the shoe boxes. You stand right there and mommy will grab them from you, okay? As for Principal Anthony Calloway, he was a bit surprised when he heard what Heather planned to do. My initial thought was, they want a what? <laughs> for how many kids? But on shoe delivery day, 350 boxes lined the cafeteria tables and the kids really didn't know what was going on until Miss Annie started calling their name. I walked into a bunch of high fives and, Mr. Calloway, look what I have, look what I have. So the kids were really excited. About 530 pre-K to eighth grade students attend Walter G. Byer School. According to the Charlotte Mecklenburg Quality of Life Explorer, the students come from about eight surrounding neighborhoods with social and economic challenges. The employment rate near the school is 80% compared to 91% for the county. The teen pregnancy rate is 6.5%, twice as high as the county average. The high school graduation rate is lower, and 42% of the people living near the school receive food stamps, which is more than double the county rate. Charlotte Mecklenburg School says 96% of the students here are considered economically disadvantaged, and 166 students are homeless. If you don't know where you're sleeping at night, and you're a child, that is a huge, huge distraction because for some of our kids, we have had to make phone calls to children's services because they were sleeping in the park and they were sleeping in a car underneath a bridge. But it's reality for some of our scholars. Regardless of whether a child needs new shoes or a place to sleep, Callaway says teachers here work closely with Project Lift and a child's place to identify anything that could keep these kids from focusing on their schoolwork. We have students that come from the shelter um, where they present to be happy, but internally their emotions show something different. A child's place is in 15 CMS schools which have a high number of students experiencing homelessness. We can't maybe control their home life so much, but we can try to help control what's going on at school to make it as normal as possible for them. For someone who says it's just a pair of shoes, there's another quote that says, walk a day in someone else's moccasins so that you can really experience what they're feeling. I invite them to come hang out with us and see what we deal with and see how our scholars react when they're giving just a pair of shoes. No doubt getting new shoes is cool, but the other really cool thing about this story is that Heather Edmonds saw a need and took action. I don't want to try to preach, but when you actually take time to be still, look at the need and say I can make a difference, it's a God moment. I don't know what else to call it, so I thank God for Heather.
for people to reach out, to reach in their pockets, not knowing these students, and to be able to give from their heart it was just truly a blessing. I could have came home and ignored the situation and said, well, I'm just one person, I can't do that. But for whatever reason, I had faith and I knew that somehow, some way, I would make it happen. No matter whether you're one person or a community of people, that if you work together, you can make a difference. It just goes to show, even the simplest gesture of kindness, like tying a kid's shoestrings, can make a huge difference. One shoebox at a time. For Carolina Impact, I'm Jeff Rivenbark reporting.